tell you that you can't make, oh, that's better. <laughs> that's better, right. Hello and welcome to P1, the motorhome and caravan parking area at Caravan Salon Dusseldorf. Now a lot of people will tell you that you can't make an international journey with an electric vehicle towing a caravan. Well, let me tell you, you jolly well can. Let's go back to Scotland to the beginning of this trip and I'll bring you with me and document this journey from Scotland to Germany. From our home in North Uist in the Outer Hebrides, we travel to Maragowan Caravan and Motorhome Club site in Killin, Stirlingshire, with an overnight stop at Morvich. I've already covered this trip, albeit the other way round, in my earlier mini-series about touring Scotland with an EV and a caravan, so I'll leave a link to that in the description below this video. I wanted to stop again at Killin, as I now had my bicycle with me, and I wanted to try out the trail through the woods. We left Maragowan for Richmond in Yorkshire with a full battery and only planned to stop at Stirling and Gretna Green. Stirling is just 36 miles from Killin, so as I'd be topping up the battery from about 80 to 100%, I'd plan to use a slow charger as it's good practice and polite to only use rapid chargers up to 80% of the battery. This is Stirling's low carbon hub and this really is the future. So as you can see you've got banks of chargers, um, we've got two banks here of 7 kilowatt, one bank of 22 and then a bank of uh, rapid 50 kilowatt DC chargers over there. There's really easy access off the motorway and as you can see there's even a pull through provision for EVs that are towing at the bank of 22 kilowatt chargers. This is how it should be done. Every single council in the UK sit up and look at Stirling. This is how you do it. Instead of having breakfast before leaving, we had breakfast, coffee and a dog walk at Stirling to make the best use of the 90 minute stop. If we were in a hurry, we could have foregone this stop altogether and stopped at Bothwell Services near Glasgow and used a rapid charger there for about 15 minutes. But I wanted to check this facility out for the video and for my own curiosity. Okay, so we are about to leave Stirling Low Carbon Hub. Uh, this is going to be our longest drive yet with the caravan. It's 101 miles to Gretna Green services. Uh, we've got 100% battery now. Uh, let's go. We're now on the motorway to Gretna Green and as you can see it is very free flowing so we are able to maintain a steady 59 miles per hour set by cruise control. Upon arrival at Gretna Green Services, I swing by the chargers to see if there is room to charge with the caravan. There isn't, so I go round again to the caravan parking area to detach it there. If possible, it is worth checking out service areas on Google Maps before visiting them to make sure that there is the means to return to the caravan after charging the car, and you don't just get spat straight back out onto the motorway by a rigid one-way system. Okay, so we have just arrived at Gretna Green. It's taken two hours to do 100 miles, but look, we've got 1.8 miles to the kilowatt hour and we still got 28% battery left. Right, so as it happens, we've got onto the Ionity chargers. We only had to wait about five minutes uh, for one to come free and I can tell you why we only had to wait five minutes. Look at this. It's charging currently at 230 kilowatts. We've got 11 minutes to go to get to 80%. 11 minutes, that's bonkers. That is absolutely bonkers. 238 kilowatts. Wow. This is how it should be. Oh, Kia EV6 coming in.
Right, so that's us up to 80%, although it's 79%. Um, we're now off to Hargill House uh, in Richmond, Caravan and Motorhome Club site. It is, I believe, 80 miles, so we should be good. We've arrived at Richmond Hargill House, so that's seven, practically 78 miles. Um, we've got 19% battery left, so yeah, you're still looking at 80 miles between charges. Um, and we've got a slightly disappointing 1.7 miles per kilowatt hour. But it's at this point in the video that I switch from a larger caravan to a smaller caravan, so we can see the difference that makes. As you can see, I have my new caravan, which is smaller. The previous caravan had an empty PLM of 1500 kilos. The empty PLM on this caravan is 1043. But what's interesting, we'll see how that affects the, uh, the miles per kilowatt hour. Now with the larger caravan, it was 1.8 and 1.7 miles per kilowatt hour on the motorway. And I used to get between 1.8 and 2 miles per kilowatt hour on two-way roads. I think this one's going to give a slightly better return on two-way roads but not so much a great saving on motorways because I believe motorways is more to do with aerodynamics. We've got the cycle rack on the back which is going to muck up the aerodynamics. However, it's slightly narrower so that should be uh, in our favour. Later in the year, folks, I would love to do some testing with something like an Ariba maybe even also a, uh, a trailer tent or a folding camper to see what the differences are. But at the moment, we'll see what the difference is between the smaller caravan and the larger caravan. We're doing our longest trip ever today in one day. I think we're doing about 235 miles. I'll confirm that at the end. Uh, we're going from Richmond Hargill House Caravan and Motorhome Club site down to Essex to Kelveden Hatch Camping and Caravanning Club site. So we've got a couple of charging stops planned. Let's go. Today we had to plan around faulty chargers. The original plan was to do 58 miles to Ferry Bridge services and top up there. But according to ZapMap, two out of the three chargers were out of use. As they are 50 kilowatts, you could end up with a long wait if there is a car waiting before you to charge and you only have two or three hours free parking at a motorway service area. So once again I left before breakfast and drove 41 miles to Weatherby services where there are loads of new chargers and because the service area is on a roundabout off the motorway I knew I'd be able to get back to the caravan after charging the car. The charging company GridServe inherited the crumbling ecotricity infrastructure at motorway service areas and is busy pouring millions of pounds into replacing it with something that's fit for purpose. Weatherbiz chargers have just been renewed and are excellent. As we wanted to top up to over 80%, I selected a slow 22 kilowatt charger, but rapid and ultra rapid chargers are also available. Even at 10am on a Thursday, Weatherby Services was busy, so it's no surprise to see that parking is limited to two hours. This would give us about 90 minutes on a slow charge, as you have to allow 15 minutes either side for detaching and reattaching the caravan. Once again, I made best use of the time by having my breakfast, making my coffee, putting the bed away and walking Dougal. 90 minutes was just about right. From Weatherby, I was heading to Peterborough Services, a grand total of 117 miles. This is why I needed to slow charge to 100%. Had there been a full complement of working charges at Ferry Bridge, we could have fast charged there up to 80%, but GridServe hasn't yet replaced those old machines. The traffic on the A1 was thick so our average speed dropped and most of the time we could only cruise at about 56 miles per hour and not 60, although sometimes there was space enough to safely overtake slower moving traffic. Everything so far had gone smoothly, but Peterborough Services at 1.30 lunchtime was a different story. 
So this is Peterborough and it's a bit chaotic because of the traffic management. So you have queuing cars here, right in front of the chargers. Chargers are all full, we're waiting. We've been here about five minutes. You can see I've got the caravan there. So it's in full view, I haven't locked it up yet. Just wait for someone to uh, finish charging. Okay, we've got in at an Ionity charger, finally. Uh, the traffic is still queuing through this area. The traffic management here at the Peterborough services is a disaster. <laughs> anyway, less of a disaster is the fact we're getting 63 kilowatts. So we've got 35 minutes to get some lunch. Happy days. I was very glad to be able to manoeuvre my new compact caravan by hand, which made life so much easier. When leaving, I noticed that there is a brand new lorry and caravan park at Peterborough Services. Had I known that, I might have left the caravan there, but that still wouldn't have helped access to the chargers with all that queuing traffic. Do remember that if there are two of you, life would be much, much simpler as one of you could stay with the caravan and get the lunch ready while the other one goes and plugs in the car. Our journey to Kelverdon Hatch Camping and Caravanning Club site was free-flowing and involved mostly motorway with a modest section of A-Road. Upon arrival, it appears that we enjoyed about 15% increased range with the smaller 1000 kilo caravan than with the larger 1500 kilo caravan. Okay, so we've arrived at Kelverdon Hatch Camping and Caravanning Club site and you can see on this leg of the journey, 78 miles, we've done 2.2 miles to the kilowatt hour. On the previous leg, which was 117 miles, we also did 2.2 miles to the kilowatt hour. And on the previous leg, which was 40 miles, we did 2 miles per kilowatt hour. But this is also great. We set off from Peterborough 80% charge. And you can see the bottom left is 34%. So we can probably do now with the smaller caravan, I reckon we can easily do 90, even 100 miles between charges. That is awesome. So we're at Kelverdon Hatch Camping and Caravanning Club site. And unfortunately, this is the point in the video where we say goodbye to Dougal because I've taken him to my mum's in Dover. It's now quite expensive and it's quite stressful for the dog to take him overseas just for one week. So sorry, no more Dougal. It's also at this point I'd like to introduce this video's sponsor, who is Whale. It's only thanks to Whale's generosity that this trip is going ahead at all. Now what's interesting is my caravan, the Explore 304, has a lot of Whale products fitted to it, including the underslung space heater and the water heater. And it was actually the Explore 304's predecessor, the Explore 302, that was the first caravan ever to be fitted with whale heating. So let's go and have a look inside and a quick chat about the advantages of the whale heating and hot water system. So here we are, this is my caravan, the Explore Active 304. If you missed the previous video where I give you a full tour of this caravan, there is a link in the description below. But the great thing about having a whale underslung space heater is the fact that it gives the caravan designers so much flexibility with the layout because they're not constrained by the position of a space heater. That is brilliant. Uh, the, the space heater and the water heater, they're separate. They both work off gas or mains. The water heater can also be operated on gas and mains for a fast warm up, uh, ultra rapid kind of warm up. And the great thing is too, because they are separate, is the fact that you don't have to have the water heater on if you've got the heating on or vice versa. So that actually can make them more energy efficient. And in this day and age, energy efficiency is what it's all about. So a massive thank you to Whale for sponsoring this video. We're now leaving Kelverdon Hatch Camping and Caravanning Club site. So we're heading to Harwich or a little CS near Harwich for the ferry tomorrow, but I need to charge the car on the way. And I'm gonna make a very slight detour to Braintree because there's somewhere that I'm dying to visit, never been there, and it's somewhere very special. I can't wait to show you.
We're visiting the UK's very first electric forecourt, operated by GridServe here at Braintree in Essex. Another electric forecourt has since opened in Norwich, and the next is due to open at Gatwick. This is an amazing facility offering ultra rapid, rapid and standard charging. If you're lucky enough to get an end charger as I did, you don't even need to detach the caravan. If you do need to detach the caravan, there is plenty of parking space in full view. There is an uber smart amenity building offering Costa Coffee, MS Food, WH Smiths and space to relax, play or work. Outside is a nice picnic area. Another great thing about owning an EV is the lovely people you meet at charging stations. This is Amanda and Dallas. Yes. Say wave, wave hello Dallas. Hello Dougal. Oh, hello Dougal. Hello Dougal. Oh, you meet the nicest people at EV charging stations. Thank you, Amanda and Dallas. Our pleasure. And Keely hiding in the, uh, the cool <laughs> Fiat 500. If only every town had an electric forecourt. After a quiet night on a site near Harwich, it was time to board the Stenoline MV Hollandica for the seven hour crossing to Hook of Holland. It's an enormous ship, especially compared to the Calmac ferries I'm used to. I paid an extra £31 each way for a single outside cabin and as the ship was very busy with limited public lounges, it was money very well spent. Hello! Sorry. Having the cabin gave me the opportunity to nap, because naps are important. I later managed to get some work done, enjoy the beautiful weather out on deck, have some lunch, and take a shower so I was fresh for arrival in the Netherlands. My campsite was only 43 miles from Hook of Holland, but for the purposes of the video, I made a stop at the Ionity Charges near Dordrecht to top up and see what the experience was like, which was pretty easy and seamless with my Kia charge card. Groene camping in the polder between Dordrecht and Breda is my kind of campsite. Rural, quiet, informal, yet with clean and modern showers and toilets and electric hookups if you require them. My pitch fee without electric hookup was 13 euro. But best of all was the facility to charge my car with their 22 kilowatt AC charger, from which the EV6 can draw 11 kilowatts. This means you can arrive with an empty battery in the evening and have it ready at 100% early the next morning. It's a low cost, low draw addition for the campsite, yet it is a total game changer for the EV Tourer and many people will soon be selecting campsites based on this facility. Okay, so the last leg of our journey leaving Grun camping in the boulder, 100% battery, let's go. The journey to Dusseldorf was free-flowing but slow. I stayed in a long line of HGVs travelling at about 53 to 55 miles per hour as I wasn't in a hurry. 
The combination of the slower speed, the drag created by the truck in front, and the awesomely smooth Dutch motorways yielded quite a shocking result. Shocking in a good way. We have arrived at Caravan Salon Dusseldorf. There's the caravan centre. And look at that folks, 122 miles and we've still got 43% battery left. We've done 2.7 miles to the kilowatt hour. Now, obviously for safety reasons, I cannot film the display while I'm driving and I don't have a co-pilot, but I can assure you that when it was 50% battery, we had done 107 miles. So in theory, in the real world, in optimum conditions, you can, in optimum conditions, get 200 miles towing a caravan from one charge. That is awesome. And here we are at P1 at Caravan Salon Dusseldorf 2022. Apologies if there's any plane noise as always. What a fantastic leg of the journey to finish with. 123 miles towing the caravan and we only used 57% of the battery. So in theory, in optimal conditions, you possibly could squeeze 200 miles out of a single charge. But I think in regular circumstances, I would still plan to not go more than 140, 150 miles on a single charge. But what about the cost? I can't give a precise figure as I had to switch caravans in Darlington and leave the caravan in Essex as I took Dougal to my mum's in Dover, but I can make an estimate. Costs for charging on the way down per kilowatt hour were as follows. At Stirling, it was free. Isle and Tigretna was 25 pence, thanks to a free subscription from Kia. The Caravan and Motorhome Club was nine pounds for 24 hours, which worked out to about 19 pence. Gridserve Weatherby, 39 pence. Ionity Peterborough was free thanks to a faulty machine. At the Camping and Caravanning Club site it was free. At Gridsurf Braintree 45 pence. Ionity Dordrecht 29 cents or 24 pence. Camping in the Boulder was 49 cents or 41 pence and they are all prices per kilowatt hour. From Killin to Harwich direct is 481 miles and from the Hook of Holland to Dusseldorf is 151 miles, giving us a total of 632 miles. An average of 2.2 miles to the kilowatt hour gives us a figure of 287 kilowatt hours for the entire journey. The average cost per kilowatt hour on this journey was 21.4 pence, making for an approximate total cost in fuel of 61 pounds and 42 pence for the direct journey and a cost per mile of 10.3 pence. The daytime ferry from Harwich to Hook of Holland was 131 pounds each way, including a cabin, booked through the Caravan and Motorhome Club Add three nights campsite fees at about £20 per night, although you could save one night by driving from the Hook of Holland and arriving into Dusseldorf at 9pm, and we have a total journey cost of £252 each way or £504 return. In previous years, I would have driven my Nissan Navara and Airstream down to Eurotunnel and taken the tunnel to Calais. From Killin to Eurotunnel via Black Horse Farm Caravan and Motorhome Club site in Folkestone is about 525 miles. I would stop midway, probably once again at Richmond Hargill House. I'd stop again at Black Horse in Folkestone, take a shuttle at about 8am and get to Dusseldorf at about 4pm, which is five hours quicker than bringing the EV via the Hook of Holland, but without the seven hours free time on board the ship to work or relax. From Calais to Dusseldorf is 250 miles, making a total journey length of 775 miles. My Navara towing the Airstream used to return 25 miles per gallon. At a diesel cost of £1.85 per litre, or £8.41 per UK gallon, 
the cost of fuel would have been £260 and a cost per mile of 33.5 pence. The Eurotunnel fare, even through the Caravan and Motorhome Club, was over double that of the Harwich to Hook of Holland fare without the cabin. It was £500 return. So at £250 each way and two nights campsite fees, this gives us a total journey cost of £550 each way or £1,100 return. If there are any errors or amendments to be made, I'll make these in the description below this video, so please do check that out. EV touring though is not for everybody and for people who still want to go to the south of France in one hit without needing to stop to eat or sleep or use the toilet, then fair dues, it's not for you. But for the rest of us, if you are prepared to rearrange your time, and that's the main takeaway from this trip, if you can rearrange your time, so rather than get up, have breakfast and leave and then shoot straight down, get up, leave, and then when you're charging, have your breakfast, make your coffee, take the dog, just, and if you're prepared to do things like that, then it really is a viable option for many people. So it's great to be here at Caravan Salon Dusseldorf. A lot of the gangs here already. Camper Toby, Sasha from Veersint Camper, Petra and Andy and the doggy Josie. And we got Marcus from Fan for Van and we've got Melly and Stefan from Happy Camping coming. So I'm really looking forward to bringing you plenty of content from Caravan Salon Dusseldorf 2022. Don't go away. I'd like to say a massive thank you I'd like to say a massive thank you to Whale for sponsoring this vlog and making this entire trip possible. So huge thanks to Whale. If you enjoyed this video, folks, you know what to do. Please give us a thumbs up, subscribe if you don't already. And it just leaves me to say, from Dougal, who's with my mum? And from me, Thanks for tuning in.